so much to GoDaddy for sponsoring this video. We'll talk more about them in a minute. Yesterday, we took this personality assessment as a team and everyone got a profile, everyone. Basically, there are these four colors and your personality fits into one of these four colors, red, green, blue, yellow, kind of like the Hogwarts houses. And what do you think I get sorted into? Hufflepuff. And everyone else is a Ravenclaw. And it basically is to help you understand your work style, how you like to work, how you come off to others, and more about the culture you would want on your team if, if you could decide everything. And this is interesting because typically software engineers are known to be as very analytical very detail oriented, very focused and kind of go into the weeds of a given problem or a given technology. And I wouldn't describe myself as detail oriented. I'm much more big picture, 80-20 rule. If I can create an automation tool that automates 80% of what I need to do and I can do it in 20 minutes or in 20% of the time, that's great and that's what I'm gonna do. And that's what I see as the purpose of technology, to automate or do all the things so that I don't have to do them. Whereas other engineers approach technology as something that's like research oriented and they want to know how every single thing works. And I guess what I'm saying is that you can be an engineer and not be that. It's actually important to have all of these houses on the same team so that you can have a diverse team. It's the back and forth that helps you make the best decisions for your product. You need lots of different points of view and you need to be able to pivot when something's not working or to reach new users. Speaking of being open, GoDaddy is hosting an event called Open 2021. It's for everyday entrepreneurs to learn, grow, and connect. There will also be sessions about digital marketing, SEO, building your brand, and more. A while back, I built my website with them, and I'm looking forward to learning about how I can take it to the next level. So join me in attending GoDaddy's Open 2021 event. There's a registration link in the description so be sure to check that out. A lot of times if you have engineers that are super into the research and want to know exactly every single detail that their programming language is providing them, they need to be pushed back a little bit by someone like me who will be like, what about our customers? Like they don't care about that feature. So let's not spend time on it. Or if you're given a new project and a lot of it is new and you just want to get an MVP or a demo of it up and running, understand the demo, be able to demo it. Someone that does do a lot of research might not want to do that. And so I can do that. Now, technically I wasn't just yellow energy. A lot of people on our team had blue red energy or blue green energy. And so they kind of fell into two different houses. For me, I was mostly yellow, but also with a bit of red energy. This red energy is someone that's action oriented, they're more fiery, they like deadlines, and they're super competitive, and I understand that. They might also follow their gut feeling. This is something I do a lot, and I think people that follow their gut feeling kind of get a bad rap because it's seen as reactionary, but I think following your gut is actually really important. What people fail to realize is that you yourself are a machine learning algorithm. You take all of your experiences that you've had, whether it was your third grade talent show or the summer job you had in high school or growing up in a small town or in a large city, these all feed into how you view view the world and how you make decisions. So when you're following your gut, it's based on all of this huge amount of data that you've gathered throughout your lifetime. And that's pretty valuable. Some people might say, do more research, and, and that is important, but there's a point where you've done enough research and you just have to make a decision. And that's why it's important to have all these different energies on your team. Not all engineers should just be in the blue energy because then we will be in research land forever. But given that tech is not perfect, my microwave is broken and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if this was Bluetooth enabled? And it is, you see the Bluetooth. The problem is, is that half the buttons on this do not work. So 
even this button where I can actually connect to Bluetooth, this button doesn't work. But you know what button does work? The subscribe button. So be sure to click that button. I think it works. You know, those front-end engineers, you can never trust them. So I need you to tap it, make sure it's connected to the back end where the core logic lives. So now that we've done that personality test, time to actually start work. So today we're actually going to put a service into production and we're doing something called a rollout. And so we won't go all the way to 100% hitting all customers and send millions of requests to our microservice right away. We'll do 1% and then 10% and then 50% and then we'll go to 100%. The important thing is that at each of these percentages, there's something you're looking for. Maybe it's you just want to gradually increase the traffic. Maybe there's a certain use case that doesn't occur unless a certain percentage or certain numbers of users hit the service and you're looking for that. But it shouldn't just be like, oh, 1%, 5, 10, 50. You want to make sure each increase for your rollout makes sense and there's something you're looking for at each of those increases. By doing the percentage rollouts, it allows you to kind of weed out what those errors that might pop up are before going straight to 100%. Now you have all of these errors and you're not really sure where they're coming from. Is it a code problem? Is it an increased usage of my service problem? Is it an issue with one of my external services that my application or my service happens to be using? There are lots of errors you can get. So anything you can do to kind of box them, prevent them is ideal. And in this rollout process, you learn a lot of things. And one of those things is it's really important to have a fallback plan. So if all goes awry, what are you going to do to make sure everything is in the right place and that it's not impacting customers? And so that might be, okay, we'll roll back, or it could be, okay, we'll lessen the percentage of the rollout. It could be, let's make sure we have enough data about the issue so we know exactly how we're gonna resolve it after the rollback. Is there a way you could do it so that it doesn't impact customers? Lots, lots of different things to discuss. Another thing that's important is to have really good channels of communication. So this particular rollout does involve a few teams, and back in the times where we were in the office, we could easily just be in a conference room, discuss it, and kind of monitor the dashboards on a monitor while we're doing our regular work. But with everyone being remote, it makes it a little more difficult. So one of the things I've done to try to make it a little easier is I make sure that there's an asynchronous way to communicate as well as a synchronous method of communication. And so the synchronous method is putting a meeting on everyone's calendar, basically saying if all goes wrong and we want to roll back or we want to, we're impacting customers, all is breaking loose, things are not good, we can jump onto this meeting and it's also a marker of at this time, on this day, we went to this percentage into production. So having that synchronous place, even if you don't use it, having a meeting where everyone can jump on and talk things through is useful and the managers like to see it, you know, so that's that's good. It lets them know that the deployment or the rollout is going on and they're aware of it. So if anyone asks them a question about when we're going to a certain percentage, they know. Now the asynchronous channel of communication, a lot of times a company will use a messaging system. This could be Discord, this could be Slack, this could be Microsoft Teams, there are lots. I'm sure there's a Google one out there, but this asynchronous method is a good way to just kind of give updates. And so maybe it's the service is looking good. We don't need to be on a call for an hour with everyone saying everything looks good. We can just post an update in the channel or if like right when we hit that number of, okay, we're at 50%. Posting that in a channel versus having everyone on a call is a lot easier method of communication. If someone's noticing maybe a spike in a certain error rate, but it isn't something that's like an emergency triage where we all need to hop on and figure something out. It's just like, hey, I noted this thing, this weird thing, like we should look into that at some point, but it's not really impacting customers. It's just something that's, an, that's to be aware of. That's great for, again, a message in a channel. You can start a thread and kind of go back and forth on that issue, investigating that issue without involving everyone. 
And usually I make this a temporary channel, so it's not something that lives forever. And once the deployment has finished or the rollout has finished, I can write out a summary of what happened. These are the steps we took. We did this deployment, then we did this deployment, then we did the rollout at this number. These were the results. We got this many concurrent requests. Our traffic rose this much. These are the errors we encountered and these are the reasons why we saw those errors. These would be a summary of how the deployment went, whether it went as expected or if we ran into some unexpected things. Then if like, let's say we were going to 5% or 10%, if there's another marker that we wanna hit, whether that's 50% or 100%, did that plan change? And so based on the fact we tried to go to 20% and it didn't work as expected, we have to rethink what the scheduling will be for the other rollout dates. Maybe that's the case and that's fine. But of course, because I was running it, nothing went wrong which is ideal. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you again, GoDaddy, for sponsoring. I'll see you at GoDaddy Open. Happy coding!